Parliament will be under the spotlight this week as the nation expects the Minister of Finance uh, to deliver his much-anticipated and much-awaited budget speech. The past two weeks have seen disturbing scenes, one would say, in Parliament where gender-based politics was used as a political football. What damage do these incidents have on Parliament as a brand? It's, uh, some might say taken left field when you look at it at that angle, but let's bring in uh, Tsepo Matseba. He is the Managing uh, Director of Reputation First Group to discuss these and other issues. Tsepo, thank you very much indeed for your time. Let's talk about Parliament as a brand. What does the brand itself promise? Um, good morning, Blaine. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, I think Parliament's brand is, uh, uh, is posed in the Constitution of South Africa. They are there to help uh, us regulate, to create regulations for, for the country. And they're also help, there to help us uh, hold the cabinet, the cabinet or the administration um, accountable. Right. That is the brand promise of, of parliament. The, the work that they are supposed to be busy with is quite complex from mm. uh, dealing with issues around the economy, uh, unemployment, um, land, um, and, and various socio-economic issues that are facing right. South Africa. So they've got a significant responsibility um, as, as members of parliament yeah. uh, and as representatives of that organization right. and, and, and indeed yeah. the representatives of the country. Because the main reason for parliament is that it needs to hold the executive as well as the state institutions accountable, isn't it? Correct. I mean, the members of parliament are elected to represent the people. But when you have parliamentarians uh, whose conduct might be called recalcitrant, uh, one would say, how does it affect the people that voted the party in? Yeah, so um, politics is a funny business. So, so in, in South Africa, South Africans forgive very quickly. So these mm. things happen um, uh, due, throughout the year in parliament and come election time, uh, South Africans will vote uh, uh, for the same, very same people that disappoint them but uh, why do you a, think that's the case <laughs> <laughs> i think we uh, as uh, we, uh, we have a history yeah. of, of of oppression and that history comes with loyalty um towards uh, certain certain movements but mm. you, you as you look at uh, our politics today there's a shift uh, of movement towards uh, uh, more younger people mm. are thinking and voting differently so the patterns of voting um, are, are changing if you talk about what's the impact on uh, South Africans. I think South Africans are beginning to lose trust in the sense that can actually these individuals hold um, government mm. accountable? Can they hold, can they represent us um, fairly and consistently um, while they are busy with the type of activities that they are busy with, um, that they seem to be busy with every day? Remember, um, there's a lot of work that happens in the committees in parliament behind the scenes yeah. that we don't necessarily uh, see. Um, but but the media and, and and people and social media will likely are yeah. likely to focus on um, what we see on the negative that we see on television. Right. Um, and and these are done by politicians sometimes deliberately, mm. um, and, and but sometimes without foresight and strategic thinking. So some of the events that happened um, uh, last week. Yeah. Um, politically speaking, if you are uh, uh, the CEO of the ANC or the CEO of the EFF, mm -hmm. you'd be or the CEO of the DA, you'd be concerned about some of the verbal utterances that yeah. um, members of parliament yeah. who are supposed to uphold, help us uphold the constitution, um, were engaged in. Um, yeah. uh, very embarrassing, particularly around uh, gender-based violence. Uh, you know, you, you say the electorate, to a large extent, is pretty much forgiving. The apology. It has a lot of weight, right, in South African politics. You saw some serious allegations of abuse being thrown around, and then the subsequent apologies from various quarters. Would you say that, that the apology for, for South Africans, you know, sitting back home is enough in order to get on with things? No, so literally the apology isn't enough. Uh, these are events that shouldn't have happened. Um, so you wonder what the strategy behind um, the initial comment by one of the MPs, I think, Boy Mamawolo, um, where the strategic uh, thinking was from from the ANC perspective. That that for me was uh, was uh, was was concerning. Mm -hmm. But equally concerning was was the relevance of of uh, 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 the EFF's commander in chief's reaction uh, in mentioning uh, President Ramaphosa uh, in the equation 
to a point where he's, he's now, he was now forced to apologize. And we understand that apologies happened. Yeah. But what was more interesting was, was uh, um, Mama Wola's uh, 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 remarks that they were friends of, of, of Malema's wife who, 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 who are now to blame for what has happened. So the apology was not actually sincere. Um, but the responsibility of a brand such as uh, a, a, a member of parliament, as a brand, the individual, is to avoid, um, is to serve people and uh, to, to be seen to be doing the right thing. And I don't think that the type of narrative that they were driving um, were, was acting in the interest of the public. You, you'll see that a lot of times it's personal and you can even see through yeah. facial expressions and nonverbal cues that they forget that they are brands themselves yeah. and that they are representing the country. And if, in fact, the world is watching. Yeah. And the type of stuff that they do, even on social media, um, is actually a digital footprint that adversely affect the work that various institutions of South Africa, that, that right. represent South Africa's brand, are doing around the world. Optics is very key as well. Even when you're sitting in Parliament and you have a, a, you know, a specific um, way that you're looking at the next person or, or looking down on your phone or maybe seem disinterested or interested, those things matter when somebody is watching from the outside, isn't it? Of course. Uh, in fact, there's a video that circulated yesterday um, that I, I picked up on mm. Twitter yesterday where one of the MPs, I think he's a, he's a minister, um, was, was, was seen sitting in a, in a, in a posture that um, created an impression that they were doing something below mm. Um, mm. the table. And so your conduct um, as a member of parliament, um, uh, you, you know, you're, you're being watched by the world. Yeah, you're yeah. being watched by the community. You're being watched by children, by your family. Um, and you shouldn't do things that you wouldn't do necessarily, um, you know, with your, with your, yeah. with your family. I mean, it's, um, it's a tough one, you know, you, because it could be innocent, you know. You, you could be just sitting there and it, it looks like you're doing something untoward, but you're not really. But with the but the trick, of here is, yeah. the trick here is for us to... For us to to pay attention about right. what we're doing. If I start poking my nose right now, yeah. um, you will be concerned about where I'm, I'm at and, and my thinking sure. capacity and, and, and my conduct off and off online. And, yeah. and similarly, you've got to be aware. It's, it's really about mindfulness, being present in the moment right. and understanding that this is a profession. It's a professional duty. It may be, a, you may be elected, but those actually are your shareholders. Right. Um, they, they will, at some point, they will hold you accountable. And I think yeah. South Africans are beginning to shift the conversations to shift the dial. It may take time to shift the dial, right. um, but the voting patterns are certainly um, uh, changing. Yeah. No, and that's because yeah. Yeah. Um, conversations are happening about the conduct of politicians, sure. the conduct of our leaders, the conduct of government, um, because none, most of the time um, people actually forget that they are representing yeah. a, a country. They are representing an institution. In fact, half the time when you talk to um, politicians or cabinet ministers, um, you address them on a specific issue, they get defensive. Um, if you look at what happened around the issue of uh, Geneva mm. and mm. that the comment, it doesn't necessarily mean that actually um, there's facts or not facts, but the reaction, the physical uh, posture says, you know, I'm angry before you even, you've annoyed me before you even ask the question. So I may not actually know what the next question is because I actually don't know. Mm. But, uh, but uh, because of the, the, the history and the level of um, confidence that we have, that may, some people may say arrogance, mm. um, we react to journalists before they even um, uh, ask questions. And that doesn't actually uh, present us well, um, uh, favorably in the, in the eye of our shareholder who is the voting yeah. population of South Africa. Yeah, it doesn't help the situation, especially if you want to get a specific me message across. You yes. know? With regards to social media, what's some of the, the best practices you would say for MPs? Well, um, <laughs> you, I mean, nudity is a no-no. So course, yes. <laughs> on, on WhatsApp, the starting point is never to, 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 to take a picture or share a picture um, that, that is nude. I always say I wouldn't do anything that I wouldn't share with my mother, share anything that I wouldn't share mm -hmm. with my mother on, on social media. And that way you are protected. Remember, it's a digital footprint. It lives for a long time. So whatever comment you make, um, it has to be consistent and in line with your reputation, in line with your brand promise, yeah. and uh, and use use social media for the right purposes. Um, now, when you are a public figure, uh, you are required. Um, there's a code of conduct which actually which says which governs how members of parliament should uh, conduct themselves. Yeah. Um, I've seen a, a social media policy by GCIS, Government Communication, but I haven't seen a social media policy. 
for members of parliament. I went through uh, parliament the mm -hmm. day looking frantically to see yeah. whether they had something along those lines. But, but actually, the, 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 the key is to use social media for the right purposes. Um, when you have had a glass of wine and you're about, about yeah. to take a flight back to Cape Town or, or to, to Jobek, um, avoid, uh, maybe put your phone away, yeah, mm. flight mode, mm, mm. and enjoy the, 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 and reflect. Uh, yeah. and, and then you can post when you are so sobered up the next no, morning. Um, and, and nothing should. And, uh, and again, the other issue is to avoid using social media to attack uh, uh, other people. Yeah. The greatest leaders um, in Obama, Barack Obama. Yeah. Um, uh, do use social media, but they use 100%. it con constructively, yeah. and they, that way they generate trust. They build trust, equity, brand equity. Mm. They build loyalty, um, but they build trust beyond just the institution of politics and government. Mm. They build trust in 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 a family context. When you when you go through his profile, when you go through the content that he posts, you can see that he, the endeavor here is to build yeah. a better world, as opposed to. Um, look like um, the, 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 the president in the U.S., mm, mm. who often comes across, um, at least uh, in, in the public world, um, as, as a very arrogant yeah. uh, uh, bully. <laughs> I always say social media can either break you or make you, you know, and there's the, the gray area is, I mean, there's, there's no gray area, so to speak, in, in social media terms. Um, yes, I mean, and, let, and the era yeah. on which you can, you can claim there were fake news. Yeah. Um, will soon catch up with all of us because people right. post things and then two minutes later they say, no, it was fake news or I was hacked. Um, yes. That era is soon coming to, to an end. Okay, you, you see that closing, that, that, yes, gap, is that closing. gap is closing. What about those disclaimers that people have on their Twitter accounts or Facebook and Instagram? Do they mean anything? Look, it may mean something to your confidence mm. that um, I'm posting this in my independent, mm. it's, this is my independent view, but it doesn't actually absolve you, especially in the labor relations context, mm. uh, from your responsibilities, from the responsibility to your employer. So if we go back Correct. to the topic of members of parliament, um, even if you say this is a private uh, profile, and, uh, but you are a minister of, of a certain department, you cannot mm. uh, separate the two. Um, I always say you, are, you, you can't be on and offline uh, in terms of your values. Uh, yeah. values, If you are guided by a certain set of values, uh, and, and, and for members of parliament, they are enshrined yeah. in the constitution, um, you, you cannot uh, uh, take a break from your responsibilities. Yeah. You, are, you, are, you are actually switched on 24-7, uh, and so, so you, you can't, you can't uh, be active and inactive as and when it suits you. Yeah, no, 100%. Look, let's put things into context in terms of what we saw at the sauna and subsequent to that in Parliament. Yes. Um, uh, you know, the number of countries that are featured on the world's most unruly uh, parliaments is growing every day. I mean, there's a number of countries that are, are, are much more worse, I think, than what South Africa is currently experiencing. What happened to sauna, at sauna, uh, for instance, might barely raise an eyebrow. Uh, in, in other parts of the world. But how does this impact South Africa as a brand, both locally and internationally? So domestically, I've already mentioned, mm. it just kills the confidence, the, the, the trust that individuals and people and communities have in our members of parliament. But um, internationally, uh, currently, as we speak, there's a team of, of, of specialists uh, from Brand South Africa in Perth. Yeah. And they are there to engage with South Africans in Perth. The work that they are doing to position South Africa uh, globally um, is being uh, diluted by this type of conduct because by, by members of parliament because what happened last week yeah. because um, all of a sudden instead of uh, the media focusing on the positives that the country is doing now the shifting focus towards what may seem like reckless conduct by members of parliament in South Africa it makes us look like we're a stone age um, uh, uh, business, uh, stone age political business, stone age uh, regulator business, uh, sto stone age legislature. Mm. It, if you look at what happened in Northwest, um, the assault and, and the level of, mm. of, of physical uh, force that was used there, it's, a, it, it's an embarrassment for the country. Financially speaking, uh, if you think about, if you can use classical, uh, the basics of, of, of brand and reputation, just mm. to think about this. If, if you buy a full page ad, in a national weekend newspaper, Sunday newspaper, yeah. for 700,000. And you take the 700,000 and you say, if, if, I, if that is in the form of an article, a full page article, because articles are trusted more than adverts, the value is higher. Mm. And so let's assume that it's a million. Mm. Uh, so all of a sudden you've got a, a, a couple of millions around the world 
um, of negative publicity which could be used um, mm. to generate positive equity for the country mm. and investor confidence and pro hopefully uh, an increase in foreign, foreign direct Is investment. this the reputational so, cost? So those are the yeah. costs. Yeah. Those are yeah. the costs. Yeah. So people look at you, it's not just, uh, I mean, in Parliament there are, there are, there are humorous moments. Mm. Um, you know, uh, things like what, what uh, Mbuiseni was, was talking about, yeah. uh, the auction and, 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 and things like that, and, and perfect wedding. Mm. They are humorous moments. But on a serious note, this is a, is a financial uh, risk for the country. It's an investment risk for the country mm. because you have to account for this type of things when you are the country's spokesperson. Right. And truthfully speaking, all companies, all, all businesses that do business out of South Africa are actually representing the brand. What do you think about as the a brand, brand? South Africa. Right. As, yes. as, as a brand, the, the, the presiding officers, the current uh, presiding officers in parliament, uh, are they representing uh, parliament as a brand positively? Yeah, I think as a presiding officer, you can always do uh, better. Mm -hmm. um, but um, you can see uh, the, the Tandi Mudise, uh, um, the honorable <laughs> Tandi yeah. Mudise, um, has got experience. Um, she's, you can see she's, she's also got the gift and the talent and the comfort to deal with this. But I, I, I also noticed um, uh, that the, uh, the, 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 the Honorable Masondo mm -hmm. uh, was, was, was battling at, at, at some point. And it's probably a, a matter of time that we should give him this, the space and the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And he has not had the opportunity to deal with um, that level of, of recently, at yeah. least, that level of intense uh, debate, uh, some of the stuff, yeah. uh, it seems like he, he was not in, in, in control. But it's probably a matter yeah. of time. But I think they, they are doing uh, the best they could. And maybe they need to have a discussion about how to, con to, how to, how to bring the house back to order. I think it's very, very difficult. At some point, you would hear, tough task. they're all yeah. talking. Yeah, um, yeah. And at some point, globally, people throw fists and so on. So you've got to be, have, have the, the voice and mm. the posture yeah. to be able to bring, to calm people down, to get people to listen to you, yeah. uh, to get people who actually don't care. Mm. Uh, because inside parliament, they are protected. But outside parliament, yeah. it's, a, it's a slightly different uh, a ball game. Yeah. So, so I, I think there's opportunity to talk about how to, how to manage um, yeah. um, the noise in parliament as a crisis. Right. Um, yeah. for that team. Uh, so if there was a team of presiding officers, they need to sit together and say, how do we actually manage this crisis mm. proactively? Because right. it is a crisis. So we've got to go and it's likely to go, yeah. it's likely to get worse. I want to, to wrap things up sure. by maybe just getting your advice to MPs. If you have to address MPs now, you know, what would you say to them in terms of, of brand, in terms of reputation, in terms of, which is a very important, trust? I would say a brand is a promise fulfilled. So when you got um, when you were campaigning, you promised people that you mm. were going to represent them, you're going to help change the country, you're going to transform the, the country, you're going to contribute and you're going to hold parliament accountable. So go there to do that which you promised to do and do it consistently. Um, and the second thing that I would say is, you know, maybe there's a program around anger management mm. that's required for, and on a serious note, for members of parliament uh, yes. so that they can manage their brands um, because if you can't contain emotions, mm. um, you create a space for crisis, you create a space for disaster, but you also create space for insults. Um, and that makes you immature. Imagine if your children are watching, and that there I'm going to the question of trust. Yeah. That if, 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 if you want all different stakeholders, including school children who are the future of our country, to trust you, um, you at least at a bare minimum need to be in a position yeah. to manage your, 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 your non-verbal yeah. cues, to manage your content and to manage your anger. Yeah. And I, rec I do recommend some type of reading, political literature, but also business right. literature. Right. Sir, thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you for the opportunity. Always appreciate it. All yes. right. Uh, Tepo Motseba is a managing director of a Reputation First Group talking to us about the brand of parliament. Interesting indeed.